we are actually driving concrete piles. Uh, these are four feet deep. You know, the guy is already standing inside, and, and the, the level of the earth is actually higher than that. So these are four feet deep concrete piles. You can see the whole, whole row of them. For every 10 feet, there is a concrete pile. And after when the piles are put in and the, the concrete and the steel rebar is put inside, then it will have a normal foundation or concrete foundation. So, so the idea here is that there will be 1,000 feet of concrete piles and foundation. So um, it is very unlikely that the water will uh, push through uh, four feet of uh, you know concrete piling. So um, you can already see the work has begun. That's what we're doing. Um, interestingly, like I said, no dogs ran away from here and the dogs that were living uh, in these quarters or these enclosures were all moved to the higher ground. I'll show you that in a minute that half of our farm is actually at a higher level than the other one. Uh, remember I described the the first Raj Kalve or the first stormwater drain that goes through the farm, through the middle of the farm. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so I'm now showing you the first stormwater drain which I've shown you outside which enters right in the middle of the farm. And that goes all the way, it enters this enclosure right here. And it is supposed to go out this enclosure and back out. The problem is that that area at the back is silted. It is completely damped. So all this water that is coming in is actually not going out. Okay. So all the water that is coming in from the the first stormwater drain is actually emptying inside the farm. And you can see behind me. You see that I am standing on the ground, which is about two to a half feet higher than, than that ground, which is where the water fell. So what is happening is all the water is coming through here, and it is emptying in this area. And I'll show you what I am at the end of the farm and the view of the sanctuary, and I am showing you how the water has traveled. So this behind me is the uh, the paraplegic unit. It's got heaters inside. You would have seen that. It's got uh, artificial grass mat and lights and heaters inside to keep the dogs warm. Um, this is the number three tank. Some of it got destroyed or altered because of the because of the water pressure. But if you can see at the far end, which is also wall that is driven inside the pile, you can see this wall all the way um, covers goes goes through around the around the farm, which is actually in concrete. But the water was up to two three feet here so with the pressure of the water the wall got moved out and the foundation has got weakened now so the, so actually it's standing but it is standing because we've got steel rebar on the other side holding the wall up otherwise the wall has got no strength so what has happened essentially is that this part of the farm the lower part of the farm where i'm standing got under three feet of water the the water actually you can see these these houses these accommodations for our parabets and all this was underwater uh, some of the water is still standing the reason we were able to pump out water that soon is because we have uh, uh, two HP submersible pumps which pump out rainwater. But the problem at that time for those days was the outside water level was higher than the inside water level. So we actually there is not, no place for the water to go. And we had to we had to kind of grin and bear it. I mean there's nothing so the pumps were working but there is no place that the water can be thrown. So this is what has happened. So essentially there are three things here. One is that one entire length of the perimeter wall has been destroyed completely, which needs to be rebuilt and rebuilt with uh, piles of concrete and, and a concrete foundation. The second part is that the wall that uh, the walls that were dest partially destroyed, the foundation has been destroyed. Those walls have to be rebuilt as well. I mean, the foundation has to be deeper, and we'll use the same similar construction on top. Uh, you can see it looks like a jail. The seat is there only to. Uh, kind of make it opaque otherwise if it's, it's got steel bars at the back uh, and the third thing is that we have to contour this area we have to bring in a lot of earth uh, so that we can somehow level some part of the uh, of the of the of the VOSD sanctuary at least till here this this part should be the same level as the part outside because otherwise we are susceptible to this kind of flooding all our lives this, we had planned everything 
we for eight years we have lived without water and last year there was rains and this year there's been torrential rain so what we did not anticipate and we were not planning for was flooding so we need to accept the challenge and do something uh, you can see um, you can see this tank behind me here there's another tank uh, about there you can see that tank there right uh, so we we have the ability to store uh, 1.5 lakh liters of, uh, of of water you can see these tanks are full uh, tanks are full so uh, we had created this place to conserve all the water we could but right now the problem is that we are too low and the water is coming in and destroying the lives of oh, who are living inside primarily the dogs and that's where we need your help because constructing a concrete wall is a very expensive proposition and it is not just 5 or 10 feet deep which we could have done easily we have to construct more than 1000 um, feet of new wall and we have to reinforce about 2000 feet of existing wall so there's a lot of work and we have to do this contouring which will require a lot of earth work to be done